What would you do if the unexpected happened? And just like that, you're stranded. You're in the woods, you don't know exactly where you are, and you can't get help right away. Now, what are your priorities? If you said one of your top priorities is food, you're why I made the video. Keep watching and I'll explain why. Now, to help me explain these basics, I'm gonna use Minecraft to help me explain it, in part because it's my son's expertise and it's a good way to get him involved in making this video, but also because Minecraft the game got a lot of things right. Okay, let's get started. So let's go back to the situation. Maybe you're dropped into the middle of nowhere for a survival TV show. Or maybe like this situation, you fell, you injured yourself, you can't communicate in the same way you would, and you gotta figure out how to get yourself out of where you are right now. Now if you do take a survival course or any basic outdoors course, this is something instructors talk about. They call it the rule of threes. But what it is, is a priority list. What you should be thinking about in the minutes hours, days, weeks, and months in the survival situation. And really, you just wanna to get to the most important things first. So think through in your head what you would do in a survival situation, and let's see if you got the order right. So now let's leave this real world to the virtual world. So these two are gonna help me out. Minecraft. Minecraft. The rule of threes in Minecraft. Minutes. You can survive three minutes without oxygen. Say you fell through the ice. Now, obviously, first priority is to get to the surface. Well, that's obvious. Or say you're in a shelter and you close the door and you start a fire. Well, that fire will suck up all your oxygen and in a few minutes, without oxygen, you're dead. Point is, that's a high priority. The three minute rule also applies to traumatic injury. Say you have a gushing wound. You gotta deal with that quickly. A few minutes and you'll bleed out. Hours. You can survive three hours without a shelter. You see, warmth and protection from the really intense exposure is important. Now imagine you're in a hot desert, or even worse, a cold, arctic, wind-blown desert. You have to control your temperature. That means if you fell into an icy lake and you get out, you gotta get warm quick. Fire, dry those clothes, get protection. This is way more important than food or water at this point, so act quickly. One of the great things with Minecraft is that building a shelter really is one of the first priorities in the game. Days. You can survive three days without water. You've heard we're mostly water, and without it, you don't function very well. And that means finding a good water source is key. And we'll talk more about finding and filtering water in another video. Weeks. You can survive roughly three weeks without food. So believe it or not, food really should be one of the last priorities in a real survival situation. Chances are someone will find you before then, so focus on staying warm and hydrated. Of course, if a pig comes by and you have an easy way of getting it, by all means get that. Just don't get hurt in doing it. This guideline may be one of the biggest misconceptions people have surviving in the wild. They think food should be high on the priority list. And in real life, you do get hungry after a day without food. So it kind of makes sense, but in a survival situation, your body will change in how it uses food. I'm gonna talk more about this in depth in a future video. I just find it really, really interesting. Months. They say you can survive three months without hope, or sometimes people say three months without companionship. But then again, this is where the rules start to become fuzzy and I'm sure it depends on the person. Point is, long-term, we humans need a sense of purpose and we need to connect with others. Maybe you can replace it with a dog for a little while, but most likely we're talking about a person. I suppose if you're really in a pinch, a beach ball with a face could trick your brain for a little bit, but long-term, that might not work. And all of this means that finding connection in our everyday life is actually a survival skill, so to speak. So there are the rules told, I hope, in a fun way through my son's video game here. The reason I start with an introduction to surviving in the wild with this overview is that I think it's key to getting your priorities straight. And remember, these are just priorities. It's an easy way to think about it. Don't get too caught up in the three minute thing or the three hour thing or three week thing because there's always exceptions to the rule. We all know you can survive without air if you hold your breath for a little bit longer than three minutes. Some people even call this the rule of fours. It's just something to think about. And of course, the general order is almost always gonna be the same. Of course you need air first. But then in a really cold situation, you need warmth and shelter. Then you need to think about water. Then you need to think about food after that. Then companionship. You know, it's just a general outlook on things. And hopefully someone finds you before all that happens and you don't have to worry about it. And this is a great time to note that we have all of this in our new book, Mother Nature Is Not Trying to Kill You, something Haley and I wrote. There's a little survival guide at the back of the book, but much of that is just trying to help you understand and interpret the natural world. It's a really fun read. Did you draw all these pictures? Especially for someone like my son, August, who's getting into interpreting what it means to be in nature. Hmm. 
Morse code. Also, we have actual courses at stoneageman.com. Go over there and check out what we're offering right now. <laughs> it's so cold. All of this is just to help you reconnect with the wild. I hope you're able to get out into your neck of the woods, wherever you are, and we'll see you in the next video.